This lesson introduces the 737 Automatic Flight or Auto Flight System. The Auto Flight System can reduce crew workload. The Automatic Flight System includes the Autopilot Flight Director System or AFDS, and the Auto Throttle. You control the Auto Flight System with the MCP and the CDU. The CDU controls and shows data from the FMC. You use the CDU to select thrust limits, target airspeeds, and flight routes for the auto throttle and AFDS to follow. The flight mode enunciation and the autopilot and auto throttle disengage lights show the status of the AFDS. The mode control panel sends data to the two flight control computers, or FCCs. The FCCs calculate thrust, pitch, and roll commands for the other auto flight system components. One of the FCCs is specified as the master FCC. Autopilot and flight director status control which FCC is the master. While each FCC continues to calculate thrust, pitch, and roll commands, the master FCC usually positions command bars for the captain's and first officer's flight directors. The FCCs are called FCCA and FCCB. For autopilot functions, FCCA controls autopilot A and FCCB controls autopilot B. For flight director functions, the FCCs position command bars for you to follow on the attitude direction indicators. The auto throttle adjusts the thrust levers with commands from the FCC. The FCCs use sensor data from other systems for their calculations. Pilot input is necessary for all auto flight system modes that use the navigation radios or the FMC. There are different levels of automation possible with the auto flight system. The lowest level occurs when you operate the flight directors. The airplane is flown manually, but the flight director supplies pitch and roll command bars. A higher level of automation adds the auto throttle to control thrust and the autopilot to control pitch and roll. The highest level of automation adds the FMC to navigate. As the level of automation increases, the crew workload decreases. You, the pilots, have control of the auto flight system. You tell it what to do. You can use all, some, or none of its functions. You change most auto flight system modes with the mode select switches. A change in mode changes the FCC's calculations. The mode select switches change the way the FCC's calculate thrust commands, pitch commands, roll commands, or a mixture of thrust, pitch, and roll commands. In these examples, FCCA is the master FCC. Push the heading select switch and look at how the FCCs operate. The FCCs calculate roll commands for the heading select mode. The master FCC sends the commands to the flight directors and the autopilot. Now push the level change switch. The FCCs calculate thrust and pitch commands for the level change mode and roll commands for the heading select mode. Now push the approach switch. The FCCs calculate thrust, pitch and roll commands for the approach mode. 
When you select the approach mode, the other modes are no longer active. The flight mode enunciation, or FMA, shows auto flight system status in four fields above the attitude indicators. The fields show data about the auto throttle, the pitch mode, the roll mode, and the AFDS status. Now let's look at the operation of the flight director, autopilot, and auto throttle. To show the flight director bars, the flight director switch must be on. Move the captain's flight director switch to FD. When the flight director switch is in FD, the AFDS flight mode enunciation shows the status FD, but the attitude indicator does not show the flight director bars. Until you select a mode or modes that use pitch and roll commands. New auto flight modes are shown with a box for 10 seconds. If the mode select switch is illuminated, you can push the switch again to deselect that mode. Flight director bars are removed when the flight director switch is off. Move the flight director switches to FD. Make sure the flight mode enunciation shows FD in the AFDS status field. Push the heading select mode select switch to engage a roll mode. Push the altitude hold mode select switch to engage a pitch mode. Notice the flight mode enunciations for auto throttle, pitch, roll, and AFDS status. The FD enunciation shows that the flight directors are on. Push one of the autopilot engage switches to engage the autopilot. You can only engage one autopilot at a time. After you push an autopilot engage switch, make sure the AFDS status enunciation is correct. The command enunciation is now shown. When you engage an autopilot, the autopilot engages in the modes that are active. In this example, the autopilot engages in altitude hold and heading select. You can engage the autopilot in command or control wheel steering shown as CWS. In command, the autopilot uses flight control computer commands to control airplane pitch and roll. In control wheel steering, the autopilot uses control wheel inputs to change pitch and roll. Now push the autopilot A control wheel steering switch. Control wheel steering pitch and control wheel steering roll replace command. The flight director bars are not removed because the FCCs continue to calculate pitch and roll commands for the flight director. The control wheel commands all CWS maneuvers. When the control wheel is released, the autopilot holds the airplane's attitude. If the autopilot is in a CWS mode and you release the control wheel when the bank angle is less than 6 degrees, the autopilot commands wings level. There are three ways to disengage the autopilot. Usually you push the autopilot disengage switch on the outboard hand grip of the control wheel. You can also push the autopilot engage switch a second time or pull down the autopilot disengage bar. The autopilot disengage bar stays in the down position with a yellow stripe in view. The bar must be in the up position before you can engage the autopilot again. 
Move the autopilot disengage bar to the up position. When the autopilot disengages, the autopilot engage switch light extinguishes. The autopilot status annunciation changes. The autopilot disengage light flashes. And you hear the warning sound. To disengage an autopilot, you must select a disengage control and then cancel the warning. The warning can be canceled with a second push on the autopilot disengage switch or push the autopilot disengage light. Push the autopilot disengage switch to disengage the autopilot. Cancel the warning. To engage the auto throttle, the auto throttle arm switch must be in the arm position and an auto throttle mode must be selected. Move the auto throttle arm switch to arm. The auto throttle arm light shows the system is armed. And the flight mode enunciation shows the auto throttle status. But the auto throttle does not engage because there is not an active auto throttle mode. Push the speed switch to engage the auto throttle. The auto throttle is now engaged and controls thrust. There are two ways to disengage the auto throttle. Usually you push one of the auto throttle disengage switches on the thrust levers. When the auto throttle is disengaged, the auto throttle arm switch moves to off. The auto throttle indicator light extinguishes. The speed switch light extinguishes. The flight mode annunciation changes and the auto throttle disengage light flashes. Push the auto throttle disengage switch a second time or push the auto throttle disengage light to cancel the warning. The auto throttle also disengages if the auto throttle arm switch is moved to off. Now disengage the auto throttle. Cancel the warning.